Hello everyone and welcome to today's Q&A. My name is Henrietta Brearley, I'm the Chief Executive of the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce and I'm joined here today by Joe Robinson, Investment Manager for the Richardson Family and Paul Faulkner, Chief of Staff and Operations for the Richardson Family, who many of you will of course recognise as former Chief Executive of the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce. Hello Paul and Joe. Hi Henrietta. Good morning. So Strange experiences. The, the, the shoe is on the other foot. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And also the Richardson Family Business School. There's a story of that incredible operation there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, so the Richardson Family, you know, well known to many in, in the West Midlands. It's a, it's a great story, a very successful uh, sort of property development business over the years. Um, and you know, in recent times, it's really started to evolve. So though the, the, the heart of the business has always remained uh, in the West Midlands, you know, it's grown and sort of now has interests you know, all around the world. Very much still got a um, sort of a, a property, property development um, side to it and a big focus, big part of the business, but in recent times has started to develop a sort of a private equity growth capital um, aspect as well, which, you know, Joe will kind of better tell us more about. And But, you know, while, while the, 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 the sort of the reach has expanded in recent times, you know, the West Midlands has always you know, remained important. There's been a number of investments made here, uh, developments done, you know, in recent weeks, we've just played a part in the uh, opening of the MacArthur Glen Designer Outlet Village over in Cannock, which is incredibly exciting. And, and, and the, the family are sort of partners with MacArthur Glen in that. So, you know, the West Midlands has never gone off the radar. Um, but I sort of think that, that, that in recent times, Joe's been putting an awful lot of work into trying to find new investment opportunities here with, with me coming on board. And I suppose with us also emerging from the pandemic, there was a sense of, look, you know, we know the region, we believe in the region passionately uh, and in the businesses here. And we think that there are um, potentially an awful lot of opportunities with good businesses who just need flexible investment at this time in order to grow. And so that was the genesis of the, the Richardson Enterprise fund which you know is a significant sort of um in sign of the intention to really invest in businesses here in the region over the next sort of you know, number of years really remember those local routes and look to support the, the economic future of the region too mm. um, so what are you hoping in terms of the funds you know thinking about the, the, the high level thoughts on what it could do for prospects of the region and Sort of what it could mean for, for businesses locally? Well, I suppose, you know, what we've sort of done is allocate, we've called it 100 million pounds, and we're looking to sort of break that up into individual investments, anywhere between two to 10 million pounds per investment. And, and we haven't set a fixed time frame on, on when that, that gets used. It's all about looking for, for the opportunities. That's why we want to go out and, and speak to businesses here and now. But, you know, this is designed to really find those businesses who are established so it's very much focused on, on not on the startup end of the scale that's not our, our area of expertise or focus but established businesses who you know are sat there thinking that you know if we could get investment in now uh, then we could sort of use that to really kick on to the next level and to really see the next you know few years being very very exciting but you know they're looking around where where's the access to funding right now and you know again it, it, it's pretty unique conditions as we come out of the pandemic obviously being uh, sort of family owned having that that independent ethos gives us a lot of flexibility when we're sort of evaluating investments and so rather than having a fixed approach what we're able to do is to have conversations with you know these business owners business leaders and work out what they're really looking for and can kind of tailor the um the, the investment approach so that it, it suits all parties, certainly obviously needs to suit uh, ourselves, but it also suits the business so that, that we're trying to gear everybody up for success from the start, because ultimately, you know, we want those businesses to continue or to take the investment and to really sort of flourish then. Um, and so it's really done by sort of leveraging that that personal approach and the flexible approach. But, you know, we, we sort of see that the, the, the next few years can be really exciting 
for the West Midlands. You know, we, we've long talked about um, the Renaissance here, haven't we, Henrietta? You know, uh, that, that was taking place pre-pandemic. And I think that once we all get back on our feet, um, there's no reason why that isn't going to continue. You know, fuel by HS2 and all of the investment we're seeing coming into the city. The Goldman Sachs news uh, recently was another big shot in the arm. And we want to be a part of that. And we want to make sure that we can kind of just give a different route to uh, new funding for, for many businesses and say one week, which also comes with that bit of personality because the, uh, uh, the, the Richardson family have an awful lot of experience in many, many sectors. And I sort of can bring that to bear together with the, the sort of the West Midlands roots. And we think we can make a really positive difference. Fantastic. I know we've uh, had many long conversations with the region over the years about how so much investment is very London centric and actually mm. isn't that much really focused on the region. This is such a huge opportunity for those businesses who perhaps felt like they've been missing out on that access to this sort of, like you say, family-led investment, um, uh, that real sort of flexible access to finance piece, and a really cool opportunity to work with such an exciting uh, family business as well. Um, now, Joe, I wonder if you could tell us a bit more detail on the investment criteria and sort of the whole process here, you know, the nuts and bolts of how it works in practice. Yeah, no, no problem, Henrietta. And yeah, to, to reiterate Paul's points, I think, um, yeah, everyone's, everyone's very excited about um you know the potential for this and 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 really you know we've had a good response over the last sort of 24 hours and um yeah we're just looking to um speak to potential businesses and partners as much as possible the phone's certainly on and um started to ring yesterday so grace um in terms of the process and the characteristics we're looking for i guess from the businesses we've a pretty broad generalist approach to investments um we've um, got a background in all different types of sectors and some um, quite exotic around the world and some a lot closer to home. So I think we can get ahead around most sectors. I think the common thread through all of the investments we make is firstly the, the people and, and, and the management, really. We, to Paul's point, we're, you know, a, a family business ourselves. So it's, um, it's, it's very important, that personal touch. So we really back sort of people and management teams um, and, and, and their plan. We, we are prepared to sort of roll our sleeves up and, 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 and help where necessary from sort of strategic advice and often take board seats in these companies. But, but really we're looking for a partnership with a, you know, with a really good entrepreneur that has a vision and a, and a plan that we, can, uh, that we feel they can execute with our help and our, our capital. Um, or equally a, a management team that may be um, looking to do a management buyout or, you know, you name it, uh, really. Um, I think other characteristics we look for are, are growth. And I think, um, you know, Paul, Paul alluded to that too as well, you know, coming out of what we've been through the last sort of 12 months is um, it's been tough, but, but equally there is now a, an optimism in the air and the timing of our sort of announcement hopefully sort of chimes in nicely with that. Um, so we do feel there's, there's great growth opportunities. There's always good businesses to invest into. And, um, and, and that is definitely the case in the West Midlands. So, yeah, we, we're always looking for our businesses to be sort of forward thinking and, and looking for, for, for sort of growth opportunities. And, and effectively, that's what we're giving. We're giving growth capital, whether or not that's an injection into uh, a business for, you know, a change of premises, you know, increased marketing or bigger team or whatever it might be. Um, we're all, it's always with the initiation to, to, to fuel growth um, or in, I suppose, in a more sort of MBO management buyout scenario, we're uh, providing capital to, to take the business on to the next generation and hopefully um, and hopefully grow, grow the business through sort of the next ownership structure, if you like. So, yeah, that, that's it, really. We, we, we're looking for, you know, good businesses that are growing, that, that we can understand with sort of. We can get ahead around things, but we're pretty simple folk who, li who like a, an understandable business model uh, that's working. Um, we like sort of recurring revenue and good, good um, sort of repeat business dynamics, etc. cetera. But um, most, most people would say that. So yeah, we're just looking for good people that have a good business that can demonstrate what they're doing is working and need capital to grow effectively. <laughs> Uh, in terms of you know setting the direction opportunities there. Um, I also have to say over the past year, despite all the challenges, I've been so impressed at some of the firms locally that have seen and really grasped opportunities for growth. 
but there really are some big opportunities out there and this is perfect for those firms that are going well how how do we get to that next stage you know how do we raise that capital how do we get that input and engagement uh, so it's a really cool opportunity I wonder if you mentioned some of your uh, current investments you know overseas some of the firms that you're already working with are there any successful investments that you'd like to share with us either locally uh, or overseas yeah, I've just made a note of three three examples. I think that one a bit further um, from home, but but all I think sort of sort of showcase the di- the dynamics and the potential that, um, that that sort of investment can 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 sort of uh, make really. Um, one is called uh, Baker and Cook. It's an artisan bakery chain in in Singapore. Um, we got involved four or five years ago. Um, and the business required sort of capital injection to um, expand their their footprint across Southeast Asia effectively. Um, at the time, um, they had two uh, two sites, and four years later, we're now um, over four uh, over thirty. Sorry. So, um, yeah, um, uh, our investment went into sort of capex to to, to grow out new sites and and, and stores and. That's been a very successful investment and, and, and we're pleased with how that's going. Um, another one is um, a distributor of gardening and tree surgery equipment uh, based here in the UK. Um, it's called FR Jones. It, it is a business that did pretty well through the pandemic actually, because the, the grass didn't stop growing, although uh, people stopped moving around. Um, but we uh, took a control, controlling stake in that business um, four years ago, and sort of under our watch, um, we've overseen a sort of a, a, a overhaul of their e-commerce, uh, direct to consumer, D 2 C strategy. Um, we have sort of uh, had a, a systems change and, and helped them move premises, etc. So we've really sort of tried to, um, you know, um, breathe life into what was a. Um, a family-run business when we took it over with a with a with a exiting a retiring shareholder. Um, so yeah, that's another example of, of of what's working. And 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 now they're one of the biggest distributors of of, of garden equipment in in Europe, um, which is a which is a, a, a good success story as well. Um, and one is a, another slightly different um, sector is uh, a business called Plenish, which is. Um, a healthy drinks and um, plant-based uh, drinks brand based here in the UK and, and, and growing into Europe. We got involved four years ago um, when the business was emerging as a, as a challenger brand in, um, in these FMCG um, sort of uh, in, this, in, in that market. Um, it's obviously been a good time to be invested into plant-based um, alternatives and um, and the business has, has, has flourished in the last three or four years with the help of our investment and further follow investments that we've made over the, over the last three or four years. So now it's one of the biggest independent um, alternative dairy brands in the UK. And, you know, we're very excited about its future as well. So, yeah, there's three success stories with, you know, um, yeah, we're looking for more. We'd love more. And it'd be great if we had a few of these in our own backyard as well. So um, that's 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 broadly that's broadly the plan and Paul's um Paul's sort of great best place to sort of head this up for us and uh, and be the spearhead for it with his profile in the region and um and with the team sat behind him that we can that we can help him sort of um execute on a few of these investments over the over the coming months that's fantastic really you guys are working with you know everything from artisan cakes welding equipment so it really is you know a diverse portfolio that you guys have there like you say, there are different strategies and different places those businesses are in where they came to you uh, from that sort of, you know, looking at expanding into physical presence premises to the, uh, the e-commerce strategy. So a really exciting opportunity to find, like you say, some of the local versions of uh, these high growth potential businesses. who are really looking to step forward to the next stage. Brilliant. So I suppose the final question is then, if uh, businesses are interested, if they're wanting to find out more, they think they could be, you know, future investment prospects for you guys. What do they do next? How do they get in touch? Well, we're, we're pretty easy to, to reach. I suppose you can uh, you know, drop us an email, um, call us. We can put our details out in, around the, the, the video. Uh, find us on social media, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. You know, kind of uh, 
come and knock on the door over in Oldbury. Uh, we'd be you know, delighted to come and speak to you in a socially distanced, COVID secure way, of course. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's the key, Henrietta, really, really keen to, to have some conversations. Joe's really you know, sort of perfectly illustrated the, the sort of the breadth of, of things that we're involved in. And so much is about the, the people at the core as opposed to the sector. And so right now we're in that, that sort of um, position of wanting to speak and to explore. And you know, not every opportunity is going to be right for us but I think you know the, the this fund is a, a sign of that intent you know we do mean business we are going to go out there and and you know find the the right deals for us and for those who we're investing in and make them happen and uh, sort of be a part of this uh this recovery for sure and kind of I think finding good businesses and helping them to to, to fuel their growth kind of you know collectively is going to you know, bring the the region and the whole country out of the the situation that we've, we've found ourselves but no please do do reach out any which way and we'll be delighted to to follow up and uh, and have that conversation fantastic well paul joe thank you so much for joining me this morning and while i'm sure we'll speak before i also look forward to having you back in a few years time to talk about some of the success stories from this fund yeah thanks henrietta Thank you.